one more thing actually before we take off is that to control the uh, to control the direction of the aircraft you have to use the arrow keys and so by pressing the down arrow key as you can see there the elevator moves up and what that does is it produces lift and so our aircraft moves upwards Sorry, it doesn't produce lift. It produces actually downforce at the back of the plane. And so when downforce is created at the back of the plane, the pitch of the aircraft changes and the nose points up. And because of that, obviously, because our thrusters are pushing us forward, we move up. Pressing the down button moves the elevators in the opposite direction. And then obviously we create lift at the back of the aircraft. And as a result of that, the front of the aircraft, so the nose, it swings down. And then again, the thrust pushes, pushes us forward. And as a result, we end up losing altitude. If we can just zoom in here to our wings. Uh, just zoom in there. I don't know if you can make it out, but if we press the arrow keys, our, um, our ailerons move. I don't know if you can see that. So when the ailerons move, what that allows us to do is we can control our roll. So that's pretty much the direction. So pretty much we get to move one of the wings up and as a result of that the other wing goes down and as a result of that the aircraft will roll onto one of its sides and we need to roll like that in order to negotiate large turns if it's a very small turn or a changing heading we'll use our rudder just like that and so yeah so our rudder controls our yaw so that's the direction in which we're flying um, and again, the rudder is used only for very minute adjustments. Usually we have to make larger adjustments. And as a result of that, we end up rolling to either side. Um, and the pitch, again, is controlled by our elevators, which are at the back of the aircraft. Now what we have to do is we have to lower our flaps what the flaps do is they they do increase drag which isn't great but what the flaps do is they produce a lot of lift and that's required in takeoff and landing situations because we're flying really slow relative to when we're at cruising altitude and so what i'm going to do here is lower my flaps to three If we were on a really short runway, I'd lower the flaps all the way just to produce maximum lift, but we've got a decent runway length here, so I reckon three should be enough. Another thing that you should do before we take off is you need to check that all of your major flight controls are working. So just pressing the arrow keys to make sure that your relevant um, panels on the aircraft are moving correctly. As we can see, lowering the flaps there, the flaps have come down. And so that's just really important to do. It sometimes helps. And what actual pilots do is they have a checklist, which allows them to work out, um, work out if they've followed all the correct procedures and make sure that all the systems on the aircraft are working before they take off. So what we're now going to do is go ahead and start up our engines. So that's panel number five. As you can see, we've already sent electricity to the engine, so there's no need to do that. And we're going to send the compressed air to our engines, starting with number one. So as you can see, what I did there was I pretty much allowed the lower needle to raise up to 60 PSI. And then you hold it there for about a second and just let go of it, and then the engine fires into life. So we're going to do the next one now, J. K and L. And so that's all four engines into life and we should wait for about say 15 to 20 seconds so that the engines have time to heat up 
as you can see they're all at 65 degrees celsius none of them are too hot none of them are too cold so we are ready to go what an actual pilot would do at this time is request for permission to take off from the tower obviously we don't have to do that back into the takeoff landing panel before we take off we should apply the brakes fully and just rev the engine up very slightly to make sure everything's working the way it should be make sure that you don't go above about 40 percent throttle because otherwise the aircraft will start moving back into and back into number five as you can see the engines are at about 30 percent and everything looks fine so we should be ready to go so we're going to give full throttle As you can see, we're going down the runway. Number five, our engines look good. You need to make sure that you stay near the middle of the runway. And then we reach what's known as V1 speed. And I press down, lift, and we are airborne. So we'll wait to get to about 200 feet and then we'll retract our landing gear. As you can see, the landing gear is going up. Um, what I didn't explain before, the V1 speed. So that's pretty much our check speed. And pretty much what happens is if we have um, if we have some sort of failure or something goes wrong before V1 speed, we abort the takeoff and we have to fix whatever's gone wrong. But if something has gone wrong after V1 speed, you're already committed to the takeoff. You don't have enough room to stop on the runway. And therefore, you're you pretty much have to take off, deal with whatever problem has happened in the air. And that's very important to remember. Now we're going to bank to our left. We're going to raise the flaps up slightly as well to about probably flaps one because we are still climbing. And level out. As you can see, we're very, very close to where we should be heading we're going to go back into number one to set our autopilot as you can see by the black color sorry by the black color arrow we're kind of turning still slightly towards the left banking slightly left and so what we need to do is we need to make the black arrow match up with the purple arrows so that we're heading in the right direction so what i'm going to do is i'm going to use the autopilot in order to do that using the buttons j and u to set our heading and I'm going to set that to 232 degrees. Perfect. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set our altitude to about 30,000 feet, which is cruising altitude, using the buttons I and K. Perfect. 30,000 feet. And our aircraft is currently going up as you can see down here at a rate of about 3,700 feet per second uh, we're gonna reduce our speed as well uh, down to about say 390 knots that's more than enough and that just allows the engines to cool off a little because you shouldn't be flying at max thrust for more than say three to four minutes at a stretch as you can see we're down to 60 percent engine very healthy all the systems look good as you can see we're gonna we raise our flaps completely up once we've reached our cruising altitude which we haven't yet as you can see everything looks great And yeah, so we're going to leave it there um, and we'll be back in a few seconds to do, to attempt a landing. Hi guys, so we're back with a landing now. What I'm going to do is I'm immediately reducing my speed by applying our spoilers. 
pitching downwards as you can see by pressing the down arrow we're going to go into number six and lower our flaps completely and i'm also going to lower our landing gear by pressing g as we can see we're rolling slightly to the left just to get in line with the runway See there, the ILS is coming back up. As you can see now, I'm just increasing the throttle a little bit to maintain some altitude, I mean some speed. And as you can see there, I'm using the rudder to make just very minute adjustments to our yaw. As you can see our ILS there is telling us to pull up a little bit but I'm going to try to land with as much room as possible on the runway to stop. Pulling slightly up, rotating and return. Immediately our brakes go on full so our spoilers come up, the wheel brakes get applied as well and I immediately apply the reverse thrusters on full intensity as well. As you can see now we're coming to a halt. And there we are. So guys that was our landing for us and we'll see you next time.